Okay, so we're doing uh, differential equations, first order differential equations, and we've had a look in equations two to five about how to solve them using this kind of idea of the separating variables method. They've all been general solutions in that there's been a constant which we've not been able to find a particular value for. That's because we need more information for a particular solution. So we're going to have a look at a couple of examples where we actually get more information. Uh, we need what we might, it might be initial conditions or it might be just a, a set of information. So here's example six. It says find a particular solution to this um, equation here, dy by dx equals e to the half x minus y. And that, if we adjust to that, we could get a general solution, but we're given the initial conditions. Initial conditions just usually means at the start, initial meaning first. So usually uh, we would think at the start, in this case, it tells us x equals zero when y equals zero. So we've got like an ordered pair um, that x and y are both zero at a particular point. If you were to uh, think about that in terms of uh, a function. Uh, dy by dx could represent the gradient of a particular function at any point. Uh, and we're effectively saying what's the equation of the, the function given that 0, 0 lies on the line. So that would be information we put in once we've got, got our general solution. So we're still going to uh, start off by finding the general solution. So we're going to take the function y by dx equals e to the half x minus y. And we're going to solve it in the best way that we can. We need to separate the variables. We've got a, a, a sum of indices here. So we can split that up into a product of two terms. dy by dx is equal to e to the power of half x multiplied by e to the power negative y. And if we want to divide through by e to the negative y, then we're going to end up with 1 over e to the negative y dy equals e to the half x dx. Now, of course, 1 over e to the negative y just becomes e to the y. Okay, so that's us got our uh, left and right hand uh, part set up, we've got a function of y dy equals function x dx, which means we can integrate both sides as long as we actually put in, we'll introduce our integral symbol and we can integrate these two expressions. Okay, let's see, let's keep that at the top. So the integral of e to the y with respect to y just becomes e to the y. And we'll get e to the half x integrate with respect to x, so it still becomes e to the half x. We're integrating, so divided by the derivative of the inside function, which is a half plus c. So I'm simplifying that, e to the y equals 2e to the half x plus c. Uh, we've got a function, an exponential function with a, a power of y, so we take a log, natural log of both sides, Okay, we've got, just keep that in a wee bracket. So e to the, the natural log of e to the y, they are inverse functions. So on the left hand side, we've got y going on here. Now what happens here? There's not much we can do. Um, and there's not much that, yeah, that's basically it. I suppose we can't really uh, improve on that. We can't simplify it any further. So we're now at the point of just saying y equals natural log of, we'll maybe put our, um, parallel lines to say that it's the modulus or the positive value of that. So that's us, except that we've got plus C, so that's a general term. So let's see what happens if we to make a particular solution. What do we need? We need some information. We're told that when x equals 0, y equals 0. So all we need to do is to substitute. Uh, we're told that y equals 0, and we're told that x equals 0, so a half x is still 0, plus c, and we've got this thing going on here. Um, that means that 0 is equal to the log of 2 
plus c. We know that if the log of something is zero, then the, the log of one is zero, which means that two plus c has to equal one, which means that the c has to the value negative one. Okay. That's just a wee fact. You should know that. Uh, we know that on the function y equals the natural log of x, which is the inverse function of y equals e to the x. We know that the exponential function always cuts the y-axis at 1. We know that a natural log function always cuts the x-axis at 1. So the point 1, 0 is a pair. x is 1, y is 0. So log of 1 is 0. So c is negative 1. And therefore, in a particular solution, we can just rewrite it. Um, y equals the natural log of 2 e to the half x minus 1, and there is our solution. Okay, so it's about finding the general solution and then substituting in uh, values to find c. Okay, um, it is possible if it's easier, once even if you've got a, 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 a solution like this. Uh, for substitution, it is possible even just to start it up here. We could have substituted 0 and 0 in here. It might have been a wee bit easier because if you notice that we could have just said e to the 0 is 2 e to the 0 plus c. 1 equals 2 plus c. c equals negative 1. So there's a way of gathering uh, the value of c slightly earlier than at the end. Um, so it's about keeping a wee eye out for that. But in general, just kind of take it to the the solution that you can and then substitute it. Okay. We've got another example, example seven, so check that one out as well.